Hi, and welcome to another episode of Function Junction. My name is Simon Timms. And I'm Eric Fleming. Great. And so in our last episode, we looked a bit at HTTP triggers, and we're just going to continue going down the list. We're going to do an episode of trigger type, I think, until we run out of trigger types. So it keeps us going for a little while. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, storage queues. So there's kind of two different queue technologies on Windows. Uh, or on Azure, rather, there are storage queues and service bus queues. So this is the older technology that's the, the storage queues. Uh, so they're, they're a pretty simple queue. They don't have any sort of like pub-sub semantics or anything like that. You just put a message in and then a message comes out. But they are dirt cheap. Uh, so that's... So if these are the older ones, is there is there something that's going to take its place or is taking its place? Uh, I, I always hear like rumor that they're going to get rid of storage queues and replace them with service bus queues, but I also heard that. Yeah, I don't, it would be a big thing, right? Like to move people away from storage queues because storage queues are one of the original things that existed on day one of Azure. So mm -hmm. people have got used to having like 10 years of, of legacy <laughs> code built up on top of it. And there are some things that are just a little bit better in storage queues than they are in service bus queues. Like I think I think you can do bigger messages in storage queues than you can in service bus queues unless you go up to like the premium service bus ones. Okay. Um, but they, cool. you know, six to one half a dozen of the other. Really, I I find them like if if I'm standing up a really simple queue and I just need something like put some messages somewhere and have something else read them, mm -hmm. just like in a distribution fashion, then storage queue is quick and easy to get up and running. Service bus queues are a little bit more work because you got to do namespaces and stuff like that with them. But anyway, uh, uh, so this is our function here. So I just bought a new project. Uh, function project here and this is our very basic function that is going to read a message off of the storage queue and do something with it uh, at the moment it doesn't do anything with it so we'll we'll figure out the sending email in later episode when we talk about output from functions because there's a really slick way of sending emails from functions but we'll get around to that so uh, what I have here is a function called send email and you can name this function anything that you want. Uh, so only have this annotation on this is kind of the name that's going to be exposed in the portal and everywhere else. Uh, I'm going to trigger this using a queue trigger. So I'm using to use a queue called email output. So the idea here being that something upstream is desirous of sending an email. And to do that, that's going to dump a message in email output. Uh, and then I'm going to use the development storage connection here. So if I pull up my local settings.json, uh, I have development storage and I just have this pointed against my local service bus or storage queue instance. So that's, that's one of the nice features about storage is that you can just run the, the storage emulator and that'll give you queue functionality locally. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be the queue message that comes in. It's just going to come in as a string. So I'm going to be responsible for knowing what serialization mechanism is being used and handling that on my side. Uh, and then I just threw in the, the trace writer log so that we could write this out to the, the console when we ran it. So let's maybe go and start up a program over here to feed a message into the queue. So this is just a, again, a really simple program here. I'm going to load up a storage account. Uh, I'm going to use the queue client to write to it. Get a reference to the storage queue that I have to find in the app settings here. So this is email output, if you remember from before, and we're using the same development storage that we were in the other program. Uh, I'm gonna create the queue if it doesn't exist. So I pop over here. I don't think this queue exists yet in my development storage. Oh, so I don't actually have any queues defined locally at the moment. So let's go and spin this program up. Uh, actually, what we'll do, maybe we'll stop both of them at the same time so that we can see what that looks like. Properties. And we'll start multiple projects. So we'll start poker. We're just going to poke messages into the queue. <laughs> it, it feels to me like poker is like a, a character from a a roll doll story. Like that's the bad guy in the story. 
Okay. See, when I first saw poker, I thought we were you were doing a card game example. <laughs> Different kind of poker. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've got the, the job post started up over here. Uh, so let's go and send a message on a storage queue. And that takes sometimes a little bit of time to happen. So storage queues, oh, there we go, we hit that breakpoint already. So storage queues, the, the semantics behind sending on it are that it is a polling interval. So you're gonna go and ask for a message from it. And in order to be polite, you don't wanna hammer the queues too much, plus it costs you a little bit of money every time you ask. And when I say a little bit of money, I mean like fractions of a fraction of a cent. Uh, so you, you need to go and ask, hey, is there anything on this queue for me? Yes, I'll take it. So it's not a blocking call, so it's not immediate. And we'll, we'll see that when we come to the, the service bus queue. So we've got our message in here, and it is just a serialized blob of JSON here. When I sent the message, I just serialized it as JSON. And that's what's going to come in. So we can then pass it off to a JSON serializer here, and we're going to deserialize that message just using JSON.net. And if we step over it, you notice that I had to step over it twice because I've got two messages coming in simultaneously on different threads. So that deserializes nicely, and that's that's all you need to do. Nice. So you, uh, I had a question for <laughs> for the polling interval. Um, is is that the function that's handling the polling interval? Yes. So this stuff is all nicely wrapped up. Like this is this function is all the code that I have in the project basically. Uh, so Azure Functions handles uh, setting up polling against this queue, kind of handling all of that stuff. Uh, you can change the polling interval. That was gonna be my next question. I, th I don't know what it is by default. I feel like it's like a minute by default or something like that, but you can change it down. Uh, by putting some settings in this host file here, I will put a link in the show notes as to where to go for that because I don't remember exactly what the, the stuff is. I'm pretty sure this is for that. I wonder if that gets output um, in the, like if you go check your bin folder. Oh, here we go. Look at that, max oh, nice. polling interval. Um, I, I assume it's in seconds. Let's change it down to five and see what happens. Uh, we'll just restart this and see if that works any quicker. Oop, stuff's always opening up on the wrong screen. I come back over here, you. Uh oh, <laughs> didn't like that. Uh, must not be less than 10. Oh, okay. So I oh, guess. It's in milliseconds. Um, days, hours, minutes, seconds. Maybe. I maybe. Oh. didn't really say what it is. Let's change it to 10 and see how it goes. Maybe it's on a second. No, that'd, be, that'd right. be pretty quick. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's seconds. I don't know. It wasn't not apparent to me. Hmm. Even 10 didn't work. Mm. All right, I'm just going to keep adding zeros until it starts. <laughs> if it is a millisecond, it might need to be like a thousand. Let's try one more time and see. Yeah, that'd be very quick, I think. That would be. Oh, it seemed happy with that. Let's see what I see how it goes. And enter. Ooh, yeah, it was pretty quick that time. I'm just gonna take okay. the breakpoint out so we can send a bunch of messages through and see how quick it is. One, one, one. Yeah, it's pretty uh, that's every second, yeah. Yeah, there's basically no perceivable latency on that. So I guess if you wanted to set it up like that, you could. Um, but that would probably every, get expensive. Well, every time you ask for one of these, it counts as a as, as a transaction. I don't know what that looks. So oh, it does. Sure. Okay. Azure rising calculator. Let's see what that looks like over here. Um, I just want to calculate prices. Hmm. Used to be a really good pricing calculator. You're gonna try and sign me up now, aren't you? I don't want to be signed up. I want the calculator. It's because I'm using Bing. That's what the problem is. Oh, uh, pricing calculator. Yeah, top oh, Bing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so storage, storage, and uh, type table in queue. Storage transactions. Okay, so if we're doing it every 
free per month, I guess. So if we're doing it 10 times a second, so 10 times 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 631 days in a month. So 100,000, so call it 27 million transaction units is by 10,000. So 2700 of these. Uh, you can delete the one. That's nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> some usability issues here. There it goes. So okay, so it's going to cost you a dollar a month. So it was was it twenty seven hundred? Right? Yeah. So even holding at that interval, it's not going to cost you that much. <laughs> so that it's going to cost you a dollar to pull, and if you were to get a message each time, I guess it would cost you twice that. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. I think we can put, probably put some links into uh, like the storage emulator. Yep. Um, yeah, we'll do links to storage emulator, maybe just pricing calculator. Uh, and I feel like there's another thing I promised. Uh, oh, the documentation yep. for changing the polling interval. Although we sussed that out ourselves. So who <laughs> needs documentation? <laughs> Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you on the next episode where we'll talk about probably service bus. Yes, that sounds good.